Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Before I get to my main topic today, which is going to be how Smith & Wesson has finally fixed the major flaws with the M&P line of guns, I want to do a little correction on what I said yesterday during my video. During my video yesterday, I was talking about uh, Senate Bill 5078, which is the magazine ban here in Washington that is in the House right now waiting to be voted on. According to the website I was using, it had not been read to the floor yet. Hadn't come out of committee. But apparently it has come out of committee. It has been read to the floor, but then it was just sent back to the Rules Committee for like a holding pattern for now. Uh, I did not see that on the other website, but I looked at another one and it was showing that they had read it to the floor. Uh, I found this out last night when the Washington uh, Civil uh, uh, Rights Association here in Washington contacted me and said, uh, here's the real information. We're running commercials. Looks like it's working. Looks like it's not going to pass, but they still do have till the 10th to vote on it. So I wanted to make sure everyone knows that. And I want to make sure that they continue to do the things they've been doing, which, according to the Civil Rights Association here in Washington, show that it's been working. That there are a lot of politicians who are like getting second thoughts about voting on this. But we can't stop until the 10th. You have to keep going. Uh, and I decided today I better give you all a link to directly to the Washington Civil Rights Association because they are the best source of information on this stuff. Uh, they're just, don't worry, they're not going to flood you with stuff asking you for money. That's not what they do. So go on over to their Discord. I don't know what a Discord is, but they gave me the link to it last night. And I'm going to try to post it in the upper corner of this video. If I can't do that, I'm going to put it down in the uh, description below. So if you are in Washington, or you're just very interested in what's going on here, because it is, like I said, a testing ground for Bloomberg, then go on over to their Discord, whatever that is, and uh, be involved and keep up the pressure on the politicians here to stop this bill, because if it gets passed here, it's going to spread, trust me, just like other things have been spreading from here to other places. Unlikely places even, like Nevada and, you know, things like that. So stop it here. This is Bloomberg's test ground. So go on over to the link I put up in the corner of this video. And if I couldn't put it there, it's down in the description of this video. Be involved over with the Washington Civil Rights Association. And like I said, they're not going to be asking you for money. They're not going to be wanting donations or memberships. They just want participation and involvement from people who have a stake in this. So go on over, use the link, be informed, and stay in the fight right up until the end. All right, with that being said, I want to get to my main topic, which, like I said, is a little gun talk, because I want to talk about how Smith & Wesson, as I said, has finally fixed at least most of the issues that kept the Smith & Wesson from being a gun that I could actually tolerate. I just always found that gun had too many flaws, and I didn't like it. I wasn't saying that it was a bad choice of a gun for people, but I just didn't like the gun myself. And there were multiple reasons for that. One was, I don't know if you remember the original grips on the gun, but they were a formless blob. They were kind of like, you know, the parts of my body that I hide with my t-shirt while I do videos. Uh, you know, it just, it was like they had the body of a 50-year-old man, basically. It was just like I said, this formless piece of bleh. And just wasn't comfortable. Uh, wasn't something that made you feel like you had a great hold on the gun. I just didn't like it. Well, they fixed that, obviously, with the 2.0 models. The grip was so much better. I remember when I first held one of the 2.0s in my hand at SHOT Show, the guy said, that grip's a lot better, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, it's great. Too bad it's still attached to a, a m and but uh, it was a huge improvement. Made the gun much better because it felt much better in the hand. And that's a big part of choosing a gun, how it feels in your hand. Because the better it feels, the more grip you have on it, the more control you have of it, the better you're going to shoot with it. So that was a huge improvement with adjustable back straps, etc. Big improvement. Now, the other main problem I had with Smith & Wesson is one that has persisted up until now. And it is the hinged trigger that they used. That was awful. I hated that thing. It literally felt like it was going to break every time I pulled the trigger. 
it was just a plastic trigger with a little hinge in the middle so that it moved the front part of the trigger, the bottom part of the trigger moved back first, and then the upper part of the trigger moved. It was awful. It just felt like that where they caught was just a huge potential break point. And I did not like it. I did not like the way it felt when I pulled it. I don't like the way it uh, was designed mechanically. I didn't like anything about it. It just felt and looked cheap. But now if you notice on all the new guns they're putting out, they have solved that problem. They have replaced it with a trigger that is much more like a Glock trigger. It's like a better Glock trigger, but it's using the same principle. It has the little, uh, what do you call it? The thingamajig or the, the, the dongle or whatever they call that thing. I forget right now what they call it, but there is a word for it. Uh, but uh, this one is much more like the Glock trigger and it is nice. It's actually like a lot of the aftermarket triggers that have been around for a while. So huge improvement on the trigger. Uh, just now that I've noticed they're doing that, I'm actually tempted to get one of the 10 uh, millimeter Smith and Wessons now because they improved that trigger. Improving that trigger, and I'm not talking the pull or the brake or anything like that. I'm just talking the physical structure of the trigger. The trigger itself was already better than a Glock trigger. Uh, it just mechanically didn't feel good. So they fixed that. The gun now is so much better with the combination of the 2.0 grip and the new trigger that they're using in their new guns. I just got an email today about a new uh, uh, baby shit brown colored one that's coming out. And yep, it's got the new trigger. So this has been a huge fix to the gun, the grips, the trigger. It's a gun now I would consider. In fact, there's only one real problem with the gun now that they haven't fixed, and I don't think they'll be able to fix. It's because of the way the dust cover is. It kind of has that slack-jawed yokel look to it. You know, like, uh, it looks like it can never quite close its mouth, you know, mouth breather. Uh, kind of the opposite of the Glocks. You know how the Glocks get the pig nose, where the, uh, the dust cover kind of curls up after it gets hot and recools? Well, on the Smith & Wessons, because of the way the slide is designed and the frame is designed, uh, it looks like it's sagging, even when it's not. It just looks that way because of the way the slide tapers. So uh, just something that bothers me aesthetically, but it's not that doesn't have anything to do with function. Uh, I think they've really improved the function of, uh, function of this gun, the feel of this gun, with the new trigger and the new grip. So in the future, you might see me owning one. Because even though I don't really like polymer guns, they're great for like keeping in the car or keeping in your uh, go bag or something like that. So now that they've done these major changes, and like I say, the, the, the mouth breather thing is something they're probably not going to be able to change. But uh, up until they do, which I don't think they will, like I said, I don't know why I'm talking about it. Uh, but with the changes they have made, like I said, don't be surprised if you see me own one of these guns in the future, especially the 10 millimeter version, because... Finally changing that trigger. And I don't know why they originally didn't do that. I think originally they just didn't want a trigger that looked like Glocks. So they tried to come up with something that was different. And different in this case didn't mean better, meant worse. So now I think they're over that. They kind of, the gun stands on its own so it can have a trigger more similar to a Glock. And I'm glad it does because like I said, don't be surprised now if I actually own one in the future. All right, everyone, that's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed the show and I hope you come back again tomorrow. Remember, we will be having a live chat tonight at 5 p.m. Pacific time. One hour after this video goes live, we will be the opening act for Never Enough Ammo's live chat right afterward. So you can have as much pro-gun, pro-freedom chat as you want tonight. So come on over to my channel at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and then go on over to Never Enough Ammo, Ammo's channel at 6 p.m. Pacific time for some, like I said, some like-minded talk about some guns and other topics. And I hope I'll see you there. Uh, until then, like I said already, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you come back again tomorrow. And until then, remember, always carry and stay safe until I see you again. Mm -hmm.